Welcome to this essential skills video for Inventor Fusion for Macintosh. In this video, you'll learn how joints work and how to create them. Use joints in Fusion to create mechanical relationships between components. You can only create joints between components. These pieces have been converted to components and have been assembled with joints. To convert these two remaining bodies to components, I click Create Components from Bodies on the context menu in the browser. Next, I decide on a foundational component in the assembly and ground that component. Currently, there is no grounded component in this assembly. If I try to test the mechanism by dragging the handle, the entire assembly moves. The two new components do not move because joints have not been applied to include them in the assembly. I ground the mounting bracket. Grounding fixes that component in 3D space and provides an immovable foundation for the mechanism. The existing joints are listed in the browser and shown in the graphics window. The mechanism is partially complete. I'll create three more joints to finish assembling the model. A cylindrical joint between the pushrod and the mount. A revolute joint between the pushrod and the link pin. And a ball joint between the pushrod and the clamp pad. I'm ready to create the first joint, so I click the Joint command. The creation of joints consists of two basic steps. Define the alignment for the joint, and define the motion for the joint. The first step here is that I specify where two components align. The highlighted selection arrow in the dialog box means that Fusion is prompting me to select a location for a joint origin on the first component. I pass the cursor over geometry to see how the joint origin aligns and snaps to various geometry. I'll select this edge, and Fusion creates the first joint origin. I need to place the second joint origin. Every joint consists of two joint origins, one joint origin on the first component and one joint origin on the second component. I pick a location for the second joint origin. The origins snap together. The joint origins define how the components are aligned. The alignment step is complete. When you snap two origins together, you have a joint. Next, I tell Fusion what kind of motion the joint uses. For this example, I need sliding motion, so I pick cylindrical, which provides both sliding and revolute motion, as is shown in the animation. I use the manipulator to drag the component. This action changes the current offset value. I'm not editing the range of motion limits or degree of freedom. Looks good, so I click OK. Next, I want a revolute joint between the hole in the pushrod and the link pin. For this particular scenario, I set the origin at the midpoint snap of the pin. I then pause the cursor over the hole to preview the next origin. Notice that because of the interfering geometry, I'm having trouble accessing the midpoint snap of the hole. To assist in this situation, I press and hold the command key. This temporarily restricts the selection of other faces, and I can now set the origin to the midpoint snap. In this scenario, I need to rotate this component to set the default alignment. The alignment step is identical for all joints, irrespective of their motion. Now the components are positioned properly. I specify the motion for the joint. And click OK. Before we create the ball joint, let's take a little break and examine one of the joints. The glyph in the graphics window not only identifies the joint location, but also shows the current offset value, if any, relative to the initial offset value for the joint. For this revolute joint, we see the degree offset. Select the glyph and then use the context menu to access various options. For example, I'll use drive joints to show an important feature of joints. Instead of using the context menu, you can also just double click the glyph. The current offset value is listed. As mentioned earlier, keep in mind that this is not a limit value or degree of freedom indication, but is only the current offset relative to the original value when the joint was created. I can drag to edit the offset, or enter a value. Or I can enter zero to return the joint to its initial position, its original as created position. Now I create the ball joint between the clamp pad and the pushrod. Now 
Let's drag the mechanism to check the relationships. Finally, I'll summarize the basics of joints. Each joint consists of two joint origins. Though joint origins are simplified to a two-dimensional shape, they do contain 3D coordinate information. When two joint origins are snapped together, you have a joint. A single joint contains all the positioning and movement information. And joint creation can be broken into two basic actions. Define the alignment of the components through the joint origin locations and orientations and any offset values. And specify the motion for the joint. Thanks for watching this Fusion video, and please check help for further details.